getting back to videos, I figured why not come back with the DVD and Blu-ray update. Uh, basically, these films have been piling up over the past month and a half, and there's quite a bunch here that I've picked up, and there's some that were a gift, so I just threw them all together, and yeah, so today I'm going to show you what I have, and i uh, got some good ones, so, and if you're wondering about the t-shirt, i got my Bloodsport t-shirt on, great movie, <laughs> classic, uh, but yeah, let's uh, kick this off. This first one's a double pack. We have 48 hours and another 48 hours. Uh, the first one's a classic. I like the sequel. Um, you can say that it copies a lot of stuff from the first film. Um, but I still like the film. I think it's a good follow-up uh, to the first. But a good double pack. And it was cheap. So I got that. Uh, next, a film that I've heard about but I haven't seen, SLC Punk, with uh, Matthew Lillard and Beth Gish. I don't know much about it. I mean, I know it's like it takes place in the 80s, sort of a punk rock movie. I don't know much about the plot, but I've heard about the film. But yeah, SLC Punk. Let me know about that one. Uh, next, we have a Bill Murray film, comedy, The Man Who Knew Too Little, and this is another one that I haven't seen, um, and I was looking at the features, you do have a commentary track, and that's kind of it. The international intelligence community is about to get a lot less intelligent. Yeah, I've never seen this one, so you can let me know about that one. The Man Who Knew Too Little. Uh, next, we have Reservoir Dogs. And this is the 10-year special edition 2-disc. I mean, look at all those features. <laughs> it's a lot of features. You know, from deleted scenes, new interviews, um, a director tribute, a retrospective look, a documentary, um, behind the Legacy, and so much more. It's loaded. It's a two-disc. So I got that. Reservoir Dogs. Uh, next, an Arnold film, which I've heard a lot of crap about. But it was a dollar. Um, I know at some point I'll give it a watch. And... You know, for a dollar, I'll get it for the Arnold Collection, so we'll see. But we have Killing Gunther. Again, I know I've heard bad things about the film. Arnold's not in the film much, and the comedy sucks. But again, it was a, a buck. So, you know, I'll give it a watch for a buck. But that's Killing Gunther with Arnold. I know the movie sucks. Um, but this next one, great sequel that I saw this year, and it's still in the plastic, Deadpool 2, um, got this on Christmas Day, and it's a great sequel. I actually prefer this one over the first, but that's just me. I really enjoyed it. Josh Brolin's Greatest Cable, and I just had a lot of fun with this movie. I need to watch it again. I, like I said, I... I saw it when it came out, but I haven't seen it since again. But Deadpool 2 is great, so I got that. Uh, next, we have a classic. We have E.T., which I thought I have. I, I thought I had the film, but I didn't. Um, but a great movie, and it was kind of refreshing watching this again, because I haven't seen the film in years. And it's well made, well directed. I would say the only part about the film that kind of takes me out of the film is the government stuff. Um, I get why it's there and I get the point, but it's sort of a weak spot for me. And maybe sometime I'll talk about that, you know, if I ever do review. Um, but you got some good bonus features up here. Some deleted scenes, a look back. 
the music of E.T., so two hours of bonus, oh no, three hours of bonus features, so that's not bad. And for a dollar, you know, this was a dollar, so, but I got E.T. Uh, next, um, a film that I've heard about, but I've never seen, uh, winner of 11 Academy Awards, including Best Picture in 1959. Yes, I'm talking about Ben-Hur with Charlton Heston. I've never seen the film. I know it's close. I know it's well over three hours. Um, but yeah, show you what it looks like inside. I love these snap cases. Um, but I got that for a dollar. So I got Ben-Hur. Uh, next, we have a Adam Sandler film, which I didn't have and I've been looking for. Punch Drunk Love. Again, I've been trying to find this one, and I and I found it for a dollar. Um, this is one I'm kind of curious about. It's more of a drama, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. You also have Philip Seymour Hoffman in the film, Louise Guzman, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. And I'm a fan of Adam Sandler, so his early work, uh, that is. And I will have to give this a watch. So yeah, Punch Drunk Love, I got that. Uh, next, uh, I got this at FYE. And I don't go out to FYE much because it's an hour away. You know, I rarely go to FYE, but I did go to FYE. And I found this for 10 bucks, And I've never seen this one, believe it or not. But we have War Games, Matthew Broderick. And this is the 25th anniversary edition. You have a documentary up here. And four featurettes. So some good features. And a sneak peek at War Games Dead Code, which I think is a sequel. And, uh... Yeah, sequel. But it was direct to video. But yeah. Four games. A good cast, too. Um, Dabney Coleman and Ali Sheedy. Yeah. I will definitely give that a watch. War games. Next, we have A Walk in the Woods with the Robert Redford and Nick Nolte. I got this for a dollar. It's a newer film with these two, a drama. And I'm a fan of these two actors, so, you know, why not get it, pick it up? I know it's sort of an adventure drama, but I got that for a dollar, A Walk in the Woods. Uh, next, we have a Rob Williams film, What Dreams May Come. And uh, I watched this again recently, and it's a very good film. Uh, it's sort of weird to watch now because it involves suicide and going to, you know, the deals with heaven and hell and the afterlife. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much a movie about the afterlife, and it's kind of weird watching it now, you know, with Robin being gone. But it is a, you know, it's a well-made movie, and the visuals in the film are really good. Uh, I don't know if they got... You know, I don't know if the visuals got any sort of awards or anything like that. I think it should have. Um, you know, it should have. Like, the, visually, the film is great. For a 1998 film, you know, I wonder if it got any sort of nomination uh, for the visuals. But, yeah. Definitely film, if you haven't seen, check it out. Uh, great drama. What Dreams May Come. Got that. Uh, next, uh, haven't seen this one, but I picked it up. Starring Jeff Bridges, White Squall, with uh, Jeff Bridges and directed by Ridley Scott. Yeah, Ridley Scott worked with Jeff Bridges, and I've never heard of the film. Uh, I don't know much about it, but I, you know, it's got to be good. With Jeff Bridges and directed by Ridley Scott. So that's White Squall. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Next, let's. Uh, I grab one of my DVDs by accident. <laughs> uh, but next we have the big hit with uh, Mark Wahlberg and Lou Diamond Phillips, Christina Applegate. I've never seen this one, um, but I've heard about it, and I figured why not pick it up. That's a good cast. So yeah, the big hit. So I got that. Uh, next, another film I haven't seen, but I've heard about. Shoot to Kill with uh, Tom Berenger, uh, Sidney Poitier. And I need to watch this one. This is one of those I've been looking out for too, and I came across it uh, at the pawn shop for a dollar. So let me know about that one. Shoot to Kill. So I got that. Uh, next, we have Hacksaw Ridge, directed by Mel Gibson. It's a very good film. Andrew Garfield is good, um, based on a true story. The romance, you know, I can go without, but it's still a very well-made film and a good story. So, yeah, Hacksaw Ridge, good flick. Uh, next, which I haven't seen the first film, but I found this one for a dollar. Again, a dollar, so. But we have Mechanic Resurrection with uh, Jason Statham. And again, I need to watch the first film um, to sort of catch up, but. Yeah, for a dollar, and it's new, why not? So, Mechanic Resurrection with Jason Statham. I got that one. Have to get the first one. Uh, next, I uh, got this on Black Friday, and I don't know why it's still in the plastic, but we have Blade Runner 2049, and I got this for like um, three bucks or something like that. It was cheap, and I still would like to watch it. I know the director is working on a Dune remake, but I don't think you need a remake of Dune. And there's a couple of features up here. But yeah. Blade Runner 2049. So I got that. Uh, next, we have a great film uh, directed by Tony Scott and written by Quentin Tarantino. Yes, I'm talking about True Romance. And this is the unrated director's cut. Uh, the two, A two-disc. And on the second disc, you got a lot of deleted and extended scenes, uh, selective commentaries with the cast, a behind-the-scenes featurette, a couple of featurettes from back in the day. And again, great movie. Great cast. You have Christian Slater, Patricia Arquette, Dennis Hopper, Val Kilmer, Gary Oldman, <laughs> Brad Pitt, Christopher Walken, Tom, Tom Sizemore, Chris Penn. Very good cast. And no one talks about true romance anymore. Like, no one really, in regards to Tarantino, you know, people will bring up Pulp Fiction or Kill Bill or Django, but, you know, in terms of his movies, I think this is one of my favorites. And he wrote the film. He didn't direct the film. Tony Scott directed the film. And, yeah, it's just a great movie that more people should talk about and more people should watch. So True Romance, great film. Next we have, and I got this for cheap, for two bucks, brand new, still in the plastic. What we have, the Death Wish remake for Bruce Willis. Yes, two dollars, got it at the pawn shop, it was a lucky find. I've heard some good things about the film, so I would definitely check it out. How far would you go to protect your family? Yeah. It's Death Wish, Bruce Willis. Again, cheap. It was a lucky find. So I got that. Uh, next, we have a Nicolas Cage film. This is one I haven't seen. I know I should watch. 
Uh, but we have Raised in Arizona, Nicolas Cage, Holly Hunter, John Goodman. A comedy beyond belief. So yeah, we'll definitely check this out. Raised in Arizona, got that. Uh, next, we have a Kevin Bacon film, Quicksilver, which the last time I saw this film, it was on TV and it was some years ago. I remember, I think Kevin Bacon's, Kevin Bacon's character is like a bike messenger, and Jamie Gertz is in the film from Twister, The Lost Boys, which I think now Jamie Gertz, uh, I think she's a owner of a sports team. I don't know, I forgot which team, which sport. You know, you can look that up, but I believe she is. <laughs> Jamie Gertz is an owner of a sports team. A little tidbit there, a trivia, but yeah, Quicksilver and Kevin Bacon. It's been a while since I've seen the film, but I figured why not pick it up for the Bacon collection. So I got that. Uh, next, we have this classic. Cuckoo's Nest, and this is another one that I thought I had, but I didn't, and this is a film that I've only seen like bit parts of over the years, like on TV, here and there, but I've never seen the entire film, I know I should give it a watch, great cast, Jad Eggleston, Christopher Lloyd, Danny DeVito, directed by Miles Foreman, but I got Best Picture, so, yeah, Cuckoo's Nest, Definitely a classic. So I got that. Uh, next, we have a holiday comedy. Trapped in Paradise. Starring Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage, John Lovitz, Dana Carvey. And I watched this over the holidays, and it's, it's okay. I'll say this, Nicolas Cage is good. John Lovitz is good. But Dana Carvey, for some reason, they gave him a very annoying voice. Dana Carvey has a very annoying voice in the film, and I don't know why. And even reading some behind the scenes of the film, I, you know, the director pretty much says, you know, y'all do what you want, you know, and he just didn't care. And I want, like, I think at one point Nicolas Cage took over directing duties because the director just just didn't care about the film and, you know, says, you know, y'all do what you want. Um, so some interesting behind the scenes on this one. Um, but again, you know, I, I like Nicolas Cage and John Lovitz, but, and I usually like Dana Carvey, but for some reason he has a very annoying voice in, this, in the film and I don't know why. Like he's trying to do his like a, an impression of Bruno Kirby or some shit like that. So it's okay for Nicolas Cage, John Lovitz, but Dana Carvey annoys the crap out of me. And I don't know why they went that way. Why they gave him this very annoying voice. Yeah, there's definitely been better holiday comedies, I could say that. But I got that. Let me get these few up here. Uh, next, we have a double feature. We have Blind Date with Bruce Willis and Kim Basinger, and My Stepmother is an Alien with Dan Aykroyd and Kim Basinger, so sort of a Basinger double pack. But I got that for a dollar. Blind Date and My Stepmother's an Alien. Next, we have To Live and Die in L.A. Got that. Very good film. Well made and well directed. Uh, the ending, I'm just I'm back and forth with, but it's still a very good film. Directed by William Freakin, who did The Exorcist. Uh, so, yeah. To, the live and to Live and Die in L.A. Good flick. Uh, next, 
We have a drama with Bruce Willis in country. And I don't know much about it, I think. I want to say Bruce Willis is like a veteran, like a war veteran. It's more of a dramatic film. But I would definitely give it a watch. Or you can you know, let me know about this one. So, got In Country. Uh, next, I uh, got this for cheap. I've never seen the film. But we have Sherlock Holmes with Robbie Downey Jr. I haven't seen these films, but I figured why not you know, pick it up. It's cheap. But we have Sherlock Holmes. Uh, next, we have Philadelphia with Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington. Very good film. Tom Hanks won the Oscar. Uh, great song, the Streets of Philadelphia by Bruce Springsteen. Uh, it was a great song. It's a well-made film. You know, great performances. So, yeah, Philadelphia. Uh, next, we have a fun action film. Action Jackson with Carl Weathers. You also have Craig T. Nelson in the film, and Vanity, Sharon Stone. Directed by Craig R. Baxley, who would go on to do I Come in Peace and Stone Cold, which I haven't seen Stone Cold yet. I Come in Peace is great. And this is a lot of fun. You know, how do you like your ribs? <laughs> uh, Action Jackson's a fun one. So I got that. Next. Uh, I think I got one more Star Trek film in regard, like the the next generation films. I have Insurrection, I have Nemesis, and I found this. So we have Star Trek First Contact, which I've heard is the best one of the next generation films. I think the only one I need now is, uh, is it Generations, I believe it's called. I had the first six Star Trek films and I love the first six. You know, I'm a big Star Trek fan, so, you know, you know, I definitely prefer Star Trek over Star Wars. And a couple of good features, like Round Table. But yeah. Star Trek First Contact. I didn't have that, so... Got that. And, let's see, Blu-rays. Uh, these are ones that I picked up. Let's see, the Blu-rays and that stack wants to fall. All right, here we go. Okay, next we have, and get into the Blu-rays, Bullet to the Head, Stallone Flick. I did finally see this, and... Uh, where to start? It's just a, it's a mediocre flick. Okay, Stallone, I'll, I'll say this about Stallone, he's the best part of the film. Everything else sucks. <laughs> His partner, I didn't care. I didn't care for Jason Momoa. I didn't care for as a villain. I will say the axe fight with him and Stallone. You know the axe fight is decent. The best part of the film is Stallone, and he can't save this film. You know, like his character should have got a better film. Originally, it was going to be him and Thomas Jane in the film. And for some reason, you know, that didn't happen. I don't know. I don't know why. And they got what's his name, Sung Kang, who I thought was lame. Jason Jason Momoa is not intimidating at all as a villain. But again, the axe fight was decent. Stallone's the best part of the film, and that's kind of it. It's just a mediocre action flick. And you would expect it more coming from Walter Hill. But yeah, I did finally see it. And I, I think it's, a, it's just mediocre. That's all I can say. But Bullets to the Head, I got that on Blu-ray. Uh, next, 
uh, got this at Pioneer, which is a pawn shop, and this was a, a great find for cheap, like three bucks. We have, and still the plastic, we have the Naked Gun Trilogy, all on Blu-ray. Again, it was like three bucks, still in the plastic. So, yeah, all three Naked Gun films. The first one has a commentary track, and that's kind of it. But yeah, the Naked Gun Trilogy on Blu-ray. Now I own that. Uh, this next one, which I this is a new film, and I definitely have to watch. I picked it up on, I want to say, not too long ago. <laughs> I know it just came out, but we have Mandy. Yeah, with Nicolas Cage, it's still in the plastic. I know I should watch it. Stop what I'm doing, go watch it right now. <laughs> um, I've heard a lot of great things about the film, so, you know, it's definitely on my to watch list. But I got Mandy, Nicolas Cage, so I got that. Uh, next, we have this double pack of Air Force One and then The Line of Fire. Uh, Air Force One's a great action film, and The Line of Fire is a great thriller. Very good double pack. So I got that on Blu-ray. And this one right here, this next one, The Graduate with a Dustin Hoffman. Got that on Blu-ray. Mrs. Robinson. Yeah, I know about the film. And, you know, why not? So, directed by Mike Nichols. And that's The Graduate. Got that. And getting to these, which were a gift, if I can get it up. There you go. Start with the DVDs first on these. Again, these were a gift. Uh, first, I got the game with a Michael Douglas. I thought I had this one too, but you know, looking back, I didn't. Great film, directed by David Fincher. Probably my favorite David Fincher film. I love Seven. I love Fight Club, and Pan I like Panic Room, but. This one, to me, is a standout. Michael Douglas is great. So I got the game. Uh, next, a film that I watched uh, for the first time yes uh, yesterday, and it was a great film. Matinee with John Goodman, directed by Joe Dante. Uh, very good film. If you could, ever, if you could find this, um, it's definitely a, a great 90s gem. You know, John Goodman, you know, is a great cast. You know, it kind of plays on the 50s, 60s horror and sort of the hysteria around the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. It's a very good comedy. Definitely one of Joe Dante's most underrated films. Yeah, Matinee is great. Uh, next, we have John Carpenter's They Live, which I didn't have. I know the Blu-ray has more features, um, but, yeah. And I miss Roddy Piper. He was a great person. I uh, met him back in yeah, 2014, a year before he passed. And uh, just a very down-to-earth guy, and I miss him a lot. But they live. Got that. Uh, next, we have Strip Tease with uh, Demi Moore, Burt Reynolds. I, I, I like this film. I saw it and I like Strip Tease. I know people say that it kind of killed Demi Moore's career. At the same time, it sort of relaunched Burt Reynolds in the 90s because of his character. You know, he's oddly entertaining in the film. <laughs> um, but Demi Moore's hot in the film and so yeah, I still I like striptease. I don't get the four point four and IDB, but that's just me. 
but I got striptease. Uh, next, we have a fun comedy. <laughs> Just a lot of fun. Loaded Weapon 1 with Emilio Estevez, Samuel Jackson. Yeah, this is a great parody spoof comedy on the action film. A lot of great appearances. I mean, you got Tim Curry, William Shatner, Whoopi Goldberg, Charlie Sheen in a cameo. Corey Feldman appears in the film. Bruce Willis appears in the film. Just a lot of cool appearances. Yeah, Loaded Weapon 1 is a, a classic. I uh, love the film. <laughs> but I got that. Uh, next, we have Midnight Run with Robert De Niro, Charles Grodin. Uh, this is one film that I've been looking out for. I know it's the overseas. So, hope it works. <laughs> Again, this was a gift. So, yeah. Got that. Midnight Run. Never seen it. So let me know about that. Uh, let's see. Okay, next we have some documentaries. Uh, Halloween, 25 Years of Terror. And some good stuff on here. I mean, you got an exclusive tour of the Halloween series, filming locations, extended interviews from Halloween 2 and 3, interviews with celebrities, all Halloween 5 on set footage. Some panel discussions on this too. A lot of panels from Halloween 2 and Halloween 6. A Michael Myers panel discussion. Just a lot of neat stuff. Over four hours of features. But yeah. That's Halloween, 25 Years of Terror. So I got that. Uh, next, we have this uh, very cool set that I started watching and I really liked it. Um, yeah, it came out last year. But we have 100 Years of Horror, hosted by Christopher Lee, where he go, you know, he talks about a lot of the black and whites, you know, a lot of the classic horror stuff, you know, Bella Lugosi, Boris Karloff. Um, and it's a, it's almost 11 hours. Um, it's a four disc set and have the, you know these little segments like 20 minute segments and they cover different things such as Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, reading off the back here, the mummy, Phantom of the, Op you know, Phantom of the Opera, uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon, the invasion of the body snatchers, Halloween, Poltergeist, and just a lot of neat stories behind the scenes you know, interviews, um, you know, old interviews, and just, it's very interesting. You know, if you're into that kind of horror, like, you know, the black and whites and that sort of history and the history of, you know, those guys like, you know, Belagosi and stuff, definitely pick this up. Again, it's 11 hours and uh, very good set. I think it was a series in the 90s, I want to say. But, yeah, 100, 100 Years of Horror, this is great. And I still have to finish watching. Uh, next, we have uh, The Boogeyman, the killer compilation, which I think is just a, a lot of scenes from horror films, you know, like Hellraiser and Scream, Child's Play, Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, Phantasm, The Puppet Master. It's like an hour, an hour long, but I got that. Uh, next, we got some of the Mangler films. We got The Mangler with Robert England. This is one I haven't seen. Directed by Toby Hooper. So I definitely give this a watch. The Mangler. Have the Mangler Two. Again, I haven't seen these, but I got that. 
Okay, and we also have the Mangler Reborn. So I got that. The Massacre continues. The Mangler Reborn. And these last few are the Blu-rays. We have, which I finally have, <laughs> and so I have to watch it. Sleepaway, uh, Sleepaway Camp. Yeah, I got that. And, um, yeah, so I have to now watch this. And it's funny, last year, I was at a convention, and Lisa Rhodes was at this convention, and I was with uh, some friends of mine, and a couple of them were vendors, and they knew her. And they were like, hey, this guy's never seen, you know, Sleepaway Camp. And she's like, come here, and she gave me a big hug. And so that was very cool, very nice in person. Um, so now I can watch it. <laughs> I got Sleepaway Camp and some good features on here too, so got that. Uh, next we have The Dark Half on Blu-ray, uh, Good Horror Flick, directed by George Romero, um, some good features up here, starring Timothy Hutton. Yeah, I like this film, uh, underrated I would say. But I got that, The Dark Half. Uh, next, we have In the Mouth of Madness, directed by John Carpenter. Uh, very good, I did see this film. Very good film, I would say. Now, one of my favorite Carpenter flicks that, you know, no one talks about much. But it's great. So I got that, In the Mouth of Madness. And lastly, we have Unearthed and Untold, a Pet Cemetery documentary, or The Path to Pet Cemetery. And I was actually watching this last night, and it's very good, very in depth on Pet Cemetery. Some good features. You get audio commentary with the creators, podcast commentary uh, from the cutting room floor featurette, uh, location photo compilation, rare onset footage, so very good stuff. That's Unearthed and Untold, documentary on Pet Cemetery, and that's it. Um, that's it for now, and uh, thank you all for watching, and I hope you, uh, yeah, there's a lot of good ones here. Um, so again, thank you for watching, and have a good day. almost forgot this one. Uh, got this at the pawn shop for a few bucks. I think it was like five bucks. But we have The X Files, season 11, the last season, uh, which has 10 episodes. And I started watching some of these. Uh, that first episode sucked so bad. Much like the last season, uh, which had six episodes. Um, but this one has 10. I just don't care for this mythology. Like, Looking for their long lost son, which they could have done so much better. And they made me not care. And then you bring back the cigarette smoking man, which doesn't make any sense. Now, I will say this. There's some really good episodes in the middle. There's like three or four good episodes that feel like the old X-Files. That feel like the previous seasons. The standalone episodes. But... And I still have to watch the last one, um, the last episode on this. But, and it's a shame because the good episodes are hampered down by this shitty ass, by yours truly, Chris Carter, <laughs> and this stupid storyline. But yeah. So I got season 11. Again, it was a few bucks. Um, I would like to get season 10 someday. Right now, I'm not in a hurry. Um, I love the X Files. I have all the, you know, all nine seasons. Um, but yeah, maybe someday I'll talk about it more. You know, when I can rewatch the entire series again and you know get season 10. And that's it. So yeah, that was. This is it. 
uh, with the DVD and Blu-ray update. And uh, thank you all for watching. Have a good day.